prayer for the 2022 national and local elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, brother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather around the table of the Lord's Word and Sacrament, let us prepare ourselves to partake of the mysteries of God's love. Let us ask God's forgiveness, and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look kindly, Lord, we pray, on the devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body may by the fruit of good works be renewed in mind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city it took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, For two days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, 
and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. Neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. For you are not pleased with sacrifices, should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it. Because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, the person of Jonah stands out in our readings today. In the Gospel, Jesus mentions the prophet Jonah as a sign our first reading tells us the story of the prophet Jonah. He was sent by God to Nineveh 
to call the people of Nineveh to repentance. Nineveh was a sinful city. The Ninevites worshipped false gods. Nineveh was also known to be a city of bloodshed. The Ninevites were very violent and cruel. It was said that they employed brutal methods in torturing and punishing their enemies. But what is surprising is that at the preaching of Jonah, everyone in the city, from the king to the citizens and even the animals, repented and returned to God. Nang marinig nila ang panawagan ni Prophet Jonah na sila'y tumalikod sa kasalanan at magbalik loob sa Diyos, lahat sila tumugon sa panawagang ito. They did not reject Jonah. They did not silence him. Hindi nila sinabing, ano ba ang sinasabi mo sa amin? Bakit ka nagtatangka sa amin? Bakit ka nakikialam sa amin? Dapat may paghihiwala yung bagay na makajos at sa mga bagay dito sa aming lunsod. Wala kang pakialam sa amin. They did not even threaten to kill Jonah. They heeded the call to repentance and they returned to God. But take note, my dear brothers and sisters, that the first one to take seriously the words of Jonah and the first one to respond to the call of Jonah was the king of Nineveh. According to our first reading, when the king heard of the words of Jonah, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Ang hari ng Nineveh, ang unang tumugon sa panawagan ng pagpagbabalik loob. And after responding himself to the call to repentance, he ordered, he issued a decree ordering everyone in the city not to eat, not to drink water, to do penances in order to gain the forgiveness of God. And because of this, because of what they did, God was pleased. God changed his mind. God relented from the punishments that he threatened against the Ninevites. Dahil nakinig ang hari, naligtas ang buong bayan. The story of Jonah and the king of Nineveh shows us what happens when kings listen to God's prophets. My dear brothers and sisters, do we still listen to prophets or do we shut them down? Do we allow prophets to speak or do we silence them? Do we allow prophets to preach God's word or do we bash them? Do we destroy their reputation and even kill them? My dear brothers and sisters, this season of Lent, let us pay attention 
to God's prophets. Let us listen to what they say, even if what they say does not please us. May we all, especially our leaders, listen attentively to God's prophets. For who knows, that might just save us. Please stand. Jonah discovered that there is no getting away from the Lord. We now turn in prayer to God the Father for the grace to change our lives and to believe firmly in Christ's call to repentance. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may work tirelessly in bringing God's message of repentance to those who seek the Lord with a sincere heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That this season may be a time of renewal and conversion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That like the citizens of Nineveh, we may renounce our evil ways and turn to God with a humble and contrite spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines, as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the dead may find peace and happiness in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us pray for the people who ask for our prayers. Let us continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. And we also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Father of all, you gave us the sign of Jonah to foreshadow the coming of your Son. As from all eternity, you willed his resurrection. Associate us with him forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, what you have given to be dedicated to your name that just as for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion in mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
the blessed apostles, St. Francis of Rome, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen
Please stand. Let us pray. O God, who never ceases to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that the refreshment you give us through it may bring us an ending life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to our Wednesday evening habit of the healing rosary of the, for the world. Our host tonight will be the Cathedral of Malolos, Bulacan, which is also dedicated to the Immaculate Conception. And we join them in praying the Holy Rosary as they celebrate the 60th anniversary of the establishment of the Diocese of Malolos. And we thank the Bishop of Malolos, Bishop Dennis Villarojo, for leading our rosary this evening. Please join us at 9 o'clock in the evening through our Facebook page. And I also wish to take this opportunity to thank those who came this morning for this Mass and those who are attending the live streaming of this Mass for all your greetings and your assurances of prayers as I celebrate today my 44th birthday. Please pray for me that like the prophet Jonah, I may also be a courageous prophet of God, that I may not hesitate in proclaiming God's word in our times. And that like the prophet Jonah, I may also not hesitate to go wherever God sends me, not to hesitate to go to whatever assignment or mission that God wants me to go to. Sana po kaming lahat ng mga pari, pagdasal ninyo, na sana ay maging matatag, maging masunurin sa kalooban ng Panginoon. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Watch over your people, Lord, and in your kindness, cleanse them from all sins. For if evil has no dominion over them, no trial can do them harm through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.